Today's video was sponsored by Policy Genius. All right, guys, it's Sunday, and that means it's time to clean up the saw mill. We got saw dust all over the floor over there. I know I need a dust collection system. I know you guys are right. That's coming. Over here, we got some slabs. They take down to the burn pile. Over here, if I tilt it right, we got that sassafras from the last video. We'll finish that up today also. And I got some hard maple right there to take to the drying stack. And I'll show you guys how I organize that and keep up with what I got. So hang in there with me, guys. Let's go get on the tractor and get going. All right, guys, look over the shadow here. The evening sun is coming down inside the tractor cab. Yeah, ain't much you can do about that. I've been getting a lot of questions about the grapple. Now, this grapple is made by Homestead Implements up in New York. And uh, a lot of people are asking how much it weighed. It looks kind of beefy. I guess you guys are thinking it was pretty heavy. It actually only weighs 366 pounds and it's a 76 inch, uh, I'm sorry, a 72 inch grapple. So uh, that's pretty good right there. So that's one thing about grapples is, in my experiences with them, you don't want them too heavy because you got all that dead weight out there hanging and that takes away your capacity on how much you can lift with your tractor. So uh, 366 pounds isn't too bad, especially for a tractor like the 574 the lift capacity for the front end loader on this tractor is 2,700 pounds. And that leaves you about 24, 2,300 pounds left after the grapple's on there. That's over a ton. That's pretty good. This grapple also has two 3,000 pound hydraulic cylinders. Uh, the grapple I was using, made by Titan, only had one. I think you need two. Sometimes with that single cylinder, I wasn't able to grab logs. They would just kind of fall out. And that's a heavy log right there. Hard maple is not light. Let's take a few of these up to the mill. Today's video is sponsored by Policy Genius. And I think there's one thing we can all agree on. Everybody needs home insurance and everybody needs auto insurance. There's no getting around it. I couldn't imagine getting by without one or the other. It just gives you a good peace of mind knowing you have both. Now this is November and there's a lot to be thankful for, including Policy Genius who can check to make sure you're not paying too much for your home or auto insurance. It doesn't cost you anything to go on their website and register and check the rates and compare them with your current ones to see if you can save some money. Their top-notch service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. Policy Genius is a marketplace. It was very easy for me to go on their webpage and get instant quotes and compare those with my current insurance prices. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they're paying for home and auto insurance. Head to policygenius.com slash OOTW to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Real big thank you to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video. We really appreciate it.
friends. I had to stop for about 30 minutes and go grab some dinner. And my goodness, it is 6.30 in Tennessee and it's black dark out here. We changed the time last night where you roll it back an hour. And uh, I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't know why we still do this. We should stop doing it. I'd be interested to see in other parts of the world if you guys still do that or not. I've never even looked that up to see if people in like New Zealand or Australia or maybe in Germany, if y'all turn the time back or just leave it alone. You're probably smarter than us. You probably leave it alone. I wish we quit doing that. But I'm running out of time, guys. I got to get in the house and edit some videos and answer a bunch of emails I got over the weekend. But I wanted to throw another log up here to show you guys before we call it done for the night. This right here is maple. And what makes this really unique is it's ambrosia maple. And uh, I'll show you guys the end grain here in just a second. Now, the reason we call it ambrosia maple is because on the end grain, you can see when you have a fresh cut like what you're looking at right here, you can see the evidence of the ambrosia beetle. The ambrosia beetle gets inside of the tree while it's still standing. I don't think this happens after it gets felled, but I could be wrong about that. And as it makes its path through the log, it causes that color to react to the wood, or I guess I should say it a better way, it causes that color to happen as it passes through the wood, put it that way. And they call that ambrosia maple based after the ambrosia beetle. It's pretty neat, it makes your maple worth a whole lot more money when you have that. And the only way that I found to identify that in a log is to see the end grain. I don't think there's a way of looking at a standing tree or at a log on the ground without looking at the end grain to see if it's got ambrosia in it or not. And there may be a method that there is, let us know in the comments below and you all learned something today. And something else about this, a lot of loggers also call this wormy maple. It's the same thing, wormy maple, ambrosia maple. It's all the same thing. This can occur in soft and hard maple both. But in my experiences, when it does happen in maple, it doesn't matter if it's hard or soft, People just call it ambrosia maple and they leave it at that. All right, guys, let's square this one up and see how it looks. Should be some good stuff in here. <laughs> 